Yeah, hi everyone. Drop me a comment and let me know that you're here. Before I start doing our little weekly session, I'd just like to remind everybody that we have a renovation boot camp, a three-day boot camp. It will be in Queensland and it will be in November. So if you're listening to this right now on YouTube or the Mums and Dads Renovators and Decorators Group, you'd really like to be at our boot camp where we go live for <laughs> three days like me. Uh, our reno coaches, some of our students will have experts in their own little fields talking about their product or services, things that can really support you renovating from start to finish. There are many moving parts to a renovation. And so I really believe that anybody who's embarking on a renovation really needs holistic support. It's not just about the property. It is about what we're thinking, about the choices we make, about the multiple decisions we have to make on the fly as well. So I'll just get my slides up. So if you're interested at all, send me a private message in the Facebook group and I'll get back to you or email me at belindas at rareteam.com.au. And uh, we can talk about how you can come to our next boot camp. We believe that there will probably be up near 100 people in the room, which is perfect for us and not too big for you guys either. So you don't get lost. Don't get lost in a room full of people, which is pretty important. You don't want to be in a sea of strangers and no one know who you are. So, all right. So we are going or I am covering this series is the room by room series and tonight's little episode tonight's live is on bathrooms the two most important rooms of a home when it comes to de decorating and renovating are the kitchens and bathrooms you have to pay attention to them you cannot just pretend that they don't exist buyers will notice they are probably the first thing that people will look at they need to tick them off in their little minds to make sure that they're okay so um, last week I talked about kitchens. If you are on YouTube or you're in the Mums and Dads group, go back and find that last video. It goes for about 10 minutes or so. But I talked about kitchens. And some of those things are cross-referencing from kitchens to bathrooms, for example, tap colours that are on trend. But let's have a look at bathrooms. I think we always need to start with the layout and the flow. My builder has just asked me to send him plans and on those plans, when I did those plans, I actually mapped out the walking distance between everything, the toilet, the shower, the shower screen and the vanity, the bath and allowed for areas to get changed in that bathroom. So it's really important that you get the layout and the flow right in a bathroom. You also need the flow of the style from your bathroom to match the rest of the style of your house. Like once you start one room, you have to continue with that style all the way through. You have to continue with that style all the way through. There has to be flow. There have to, has to be, it just has to be a continuing vibe. So what style aesthetics? It's sometimes determined if you're doing a renovation, it's sometimes determined by what you're already starting with or if there are components of your bathroom that you're happy to keep. But if you can start from scratch, then it gets very, very exciting. And in the end, it's up to you. But if you're about to sell that property, make sure you consider the end buyer, who's more important than you are. It's not about what you like so much as what's going to sell if that's your purpose is to flip the property. Lighting in a bathroom, guys, make sure that you don't just think, okay, there's a lighting in the middle, a light in the middle of the room, that's just fine. Lighting and exhaust, you need to consider the steam and the use of a bathroom. And people putting on their makeup, cleaning their teeth, looking at their faces in a mirror. So there has to be good lighting where people can actually get ready in the morning and see what they look like, especially for those putting on makeup. You'll understand when I say sometimes if you put makeup on in a dark room and then you jump in the car to drive somewhere and you look in the rear vision mirror in full light and go, oh, my goodness. So lighting in a bathroom has to be great. And same with storage. A lot of these floating vanities lack storage. So think about the type of vanity unit you're going to get. And if you don't have enough storage in that vanity, then you need to provide some face height storage, perhaps in what they call a shaving cabinet or a medical cabinet. There's just so many beautiful ones on the market. So costs as well, guys, if you're going to spend a lot on vanity and that vanity has good storage, then perhaps you could cut back and do just a mirror. Maybe you don't need some face height storage if you've got plenty in the vanity. Same if you've got a face height mirror and that's going to be, and that's got some storage behind it. 
and that cost you a lot of money, you might have to pull back on the spend on your vanity. So it's, you know, all of us are always just juggling. But in the end, you need people to be able to feel comfortable and put their things in places. Think about the use, like pretend you're using the space when you're choosing your bits and pieces, not just from the look, but also the functionality. Budget bathrooms. I'm going to show you two bathrooms now. They're from one of my top students, Amanda Bird. She renovates full time. And she's from Transforming Squares and you'll see her on Facebook and you'll also see her on Instagram. And this is a budget bathroom. And here's my top tip. Spend more on the floor and less on the walls or the other way around. If you're going to have a beautiful feature tile on your walls that costs you quite a bit, then cut back everywhere else. Or if you're going to have a decorative floor, then just make sure the rest of it blends very nicely and you can afford to cut back a little bit on the rest of it. You don't need to spend big on the floor and on all of the walls. It will blow your budget in a heartbeat. The other thing I like people to do is really draw attention to one thing so that when people walk into the bathroom, you need their eyes to go somewhere. In this particular case, this is also a budget bathroom. Amanda's great at doing flips and understanding her market and just taking it far enough. So a bathroom looks really beautiful, but she hasn't overspent. So if you actually pull apart the, pull apart the pieces in this bathroom, you'll see she's got a really lovely freestanding bath in front of that tiled wall. And I don't know about you, but my eyes go straight there. And I'm glad they go there because... This vanity, the vanity, the plain white vanity is lovely, but it's not very spectacular. So you want whatever is spectacular to be the feature of the room. I really love that she's got a skylight in this room too. And if you've got the chance to pop a skylight in, particularly if you're renovating to the extent where you've got the budget for it, our skylights are amazing and creating a different feel inside a room and people love light. You know my saying, light, bright and breezy sells easy. So think about that in your bathroom as well. And styling is your best friend. Look, guys, if you've ended up doing a bathroom and when you look back, you think, oh, it's a little bit plain, then make sure you style it up a treat. Make sure you have some colours in your towels. Make sure you've got things on your vanity as well as any shelves. Really style up that space so that people don't notice that it's a little bit plain. If it's empty, it can feel very, very clinical and very, very cold. So what's out and what's in? What's in? Rounded. Rounded corners on mirrors, arched mirrors, rounded corners on vanities. You can see how soft those corners are there. These two bathrooms are by Catherine Herity, a local designer from The Stables. Lovely. Go and have a look at her Insta page. She does some really nice work. Rounded corners. Texture, you see the interest in these tiles here. Those tiles there on the wall would have cost a lot more than the tiles on the floor. The laying of these tiles really matters too to create some texture. Water wave, I'll call them water wave, but they come in all different names. Your subway tile, longer, skinnier subway tiles with a ripple effect. They're very, very effective in creating texture and a bit of pizzazz and drawing your eye. Warmth is in, guys, cold, hard, white, cement, greys, anything that makes you feel a bit lifeless, forget those, forget them. Cement look floors and white, white walls and white vanities with no pizzazz, no heart and no soul, that will hurt you if you're trying to sell or rent out your property. People do expect more and they feel connection to something that's warm and interesting. Greens and blues are very, very safe colours and I'm seeing them come in a lot, particularly overseas at the moment, in bathrooms and in kitchens. Not all of the benches or not all of the cupboards, not so much on benches, but the cupboards are, are done in greens and blues, sometimes only a touch here and there or a touch on the wall tiles in bathrooms. I see a lot of soft greens, sage greens in bathrooms and I think they're quite beautiful. They're very market acceptable alongside the neutrals and if you want to create a bit of pizzazz and you do, and you feel like you're doing everything all the same, same, then don't be afraid to add some soft greens and some blues because they're very, very popular. Earth tones, they're always going to be in. Neutrals that really draw our, well, they really pull on our senses, I guess. Wall sconces and good lighting. Either one, you can have a sconce above a mirror. You can have one either side of the mirror. You can have two mirrors side by side and three sconces 
or one on either side, but start to really look at the elements. When you see pictures that you love on Instagram, start to really examine the elements and pull them apart in your mind. And once you pull them apart in your mind, you'll understand, oh, this is what they've done, and you'll be able to do the same thing yourself. What's out? Yeah, white, clinical, grey and cold. And don't be afraid to mix and match tiles. And I'm talking about patterns of tiles and colour in tiles. Like you can even see what Catherine's done here. There's a pattern on the floor there and there's a bit of oomph in this tile. It's not just a plain flat matte tile. There's a bit of interest in that tile there. So don't be afraid to put one side by side with the next because they go really well together. The product choices when we're talking about taps, and handles, the same as kitchen, same trends, guys. So think about all of these colors. Anything goes. It's so awesome. It's good to be alive right now. It's good. It's a good time to be alive. It's good to be alive like with our clothes. You know, I look at jeans, they're straight leg, they're boot leg, they're flared, they're boy leg, they're just everything. The same with our same with our homes. It's really, really good that you can put your own flavor into your home and it still be on trend and very, very popular. So bathroom product choices. Think beyond white again. The cheapest obviously are your bunnings, your caboodle range for your, your cabinets, your bunnings vanities, like all of that kind of stuff, stuff that you can put together from IKEA. That's obviously the flat packing stuff is going to be your cheapest option. Another cheap option is just to bespoke build something, two slabs of wood with a with a really cool looking plumber's neck. I'm not sure. I can't remember that bottleneck or something. They're called a certain, a trap, plumber's trap that look kind of funky enough. That will do if you run out of money. But in essence, you can do anything you like so long as it looks good and you finished it off very, very well. I think middle of the range, if you've got a little bit more coin, you should be looking at high groves, maybe even the blue space is a very, a great range of product at the blue space online. And it goes from relatively inexpensive to very expensive, but there's lots to look at there. And it's very, very interesting to see plenty of photos that give you inspiration on what to do. Same with high groves. I think high groves for what you get, I think they actually produce really good product you know, and mixing and matching like we do with our clothes is a great idea too. Like you might have a high groves vanity snuck in and something else and, you know, a more expensive tile. You can get away with a lot, same as you can get away with wearing $200 boots, um, $100 jeans and a $10 Kmart t-shirt. So same thing. We mix and match our clothes. Don't be afraid to do that in your own homes. And then we go a bit higher end. We've got Lachlan Furniture Designs. They do the most gorgeous bespoke vanities and you know round corners square corners louvered doors plain doors shaker doors lots of natural woods they do some really beautiful vanities and abi interiors there's a great range at abi interiors too but i've kind of ordered them in a list of you know cheapest to more expensive you can always find bargains online i like to feel and touch things just a little bit if i've got the chance i have bought online and i do buy online but i still love it if i can get my fingers on something, especially when it comes down to tonality of wood. So if you can see, if you can search online and perhaps go and visit the stuff in store before you buy, I think that's ideal as well. Be careful with some of these warehouses that call themselves discount warehouses. Sometimes they're not. There's a renovation warehouse. I won't actually mention the brand. It's not far from me, but I walked through the store and I thought, this is not cheap. <laughs> Your stuff is not a discount or a bargain. And you can call yourself the renovation discount, whatever's. But, you know, you guys, it's up to you to know your prices and to know the quality of the product because I walked through there and I was very, very unimpressed. So uh, don't take the word bargain or discount or renovation warehouse or any of those things. Don't take them as a given that you're going to get great product for less because it may not be the case. Freestanding baths, guys, they're in. I love back-to-wall baths as well. They sell, I was talking to the gentleman at High Groves the other day, they sell a lot of the back-to-wall baths. If you don't know, I should have a picture, but I don't. The baths, basically, they look like a freestanding when, at first glance from the front, but they continue right to the wall, like this part here is filled in and this part here is filled in so that you don't have any of the issues with cleaning behind. You'll have all sorts of people say, oh, I would never have a freestanding bath because they're hard to clean. I just say, just, just work it out. <laughs> Because they look adorable. They're really popular. You can get behind there with a feather duster and a bit of a, a bucket of hot soapy water where there's a will, there's a way. 
really we can clean good enough behind stuff like that and I think that they look gorgeous and here are tiles guys you know look at those tiles here there's a tile here on the floor that they've carried up the wall and there's a coordinating tile here shelves are just gorgeous whether they're deep shelves or tiny shelves freestanding taps bars I love them but be really really careful I would never put them in a home where you are going to have tenants and I'd be very careful if they're out in the middle of the room like this if you've got little kids because if people swing on them they become loose at their base pretty quickly and they look pretty ordinary and they there's nothing worse than having have, having to pay a plumber to come back and fix something. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. Go with your heart when you're doing your bathroom. Think about the layout. Think about the usability. Think about adding some colour. Be brave. It's time to be a bit braver than we used to be. And think beyond just doing all white and definitely never do cold. Just never, ever, ever do cold. That's not how you get to sell a house. It's not how you're going to feel like you're relaxing at the end of a hard day or unwinding. You know, bathrooms are places to retreat to. They are places where we just love to just get it all together again at the end of a hard day or have a shower for the beginning of a, a day and spring out nice and fresh and clean and ready for it. So think about how bathrooms make us feel when you do your design and you put them together. Hope you've enjoyed that session, guys. Has anybody made any comments or need me to answer anything? Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining me, Ashley, Robin, Marianne. Bye. That's it. If you'd like to come to my renovation workshop, make sure you reach out. We will be filling it up pretty soon, I'd say, as soon as I put the word out. We've only released information about it yesterday, but as soon as it hits social media in a big way, it's going to fill up. So if you want to come, you only need to book your spot very, very early. Bye, guys. Happy renovating.